Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Today is Friday, praise God. And the second day of the month of August 2024, praise God. Hey, listen, we, we, we dwelt a lot last month talking about the following God, you know, following to know, following to know. And we're taking it a, a step further by delving into the knowledge of God this month. And so open up your hearts. It's going to be a great month. I know. See, by the kind of things the Spirit of God is bringing to your attention, you should tell. You should tell. Praise God. Can we make demands for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, Father. I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Good things are happening to you this month. Mighty things are going to be seen in your life. I pray over you that you will never lack slack supplies. You will never lack supplies. In the name of the Lord Jesus. When men say there is a casting down. Hey, you are going to have reason. Now, it's not just confession. So it's not like, oh man, when people are saying this, God, this casting down things are bad. Things are, oh no, I refuse to say that. Though. The Bible says I shall say there's a lifting up. So I say there's lifting up. No, that's not the fulfillment of that scripture, you know. It's a prophecy that when men say there is a casting down, why are men saying that there is a casting down? Because things are bad. Inflation is high. They cannot buy the things they need to buy. He says, you will have a reason, or not a reason, you have reasons to say, no, let's lift it up, praise God, yes. So let me tell you the truth, the reason there's a casting down, I'll call me na pradisa. Now some people won't, do not like this, but, but I'll tell you the truth. The reason there is a casting down is because God wants to lift you. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The reason there is a casting down is because your lifting has come. Question then is how do you see? That's why you must not follow the crowd. You must not follow people to do what they are doing. Stand back. Yeah. Always learn this in life. Don't move with the crowd. If you can just stay back, you will see what they don't see. And it will give you the advantage. Generally in life. That's why even Paul thought that to look, study to be quiet. So learn how to be quiet. Learn how to be quiet. He's not saying be, be a CC. No, he said, look, learn to be, talk, actually, learn to talk while you're quiet. <laughs> yes. Learn to be strong when it looks like you're weak. Learn to demonstrate strength in weakness. Yeah. So, God is opening up seasons for your life. And you've got to strengthen your heart, strengthen your heart, strengthen your heart, not to be like everybody else. No! We, are ne- we have never been put in competition with anybody. You know, sometimes I, I, hear, I hear some people say, eh, upon all our prayers, upon all our um, tithing, upon all our giving, how come we are not the richest people on the earth? Who told you God? You see, who's the richest? Who are the richest people on the earth? You begin to look at the, the, the names. <laughs> you know what? Uh, this might shock you, but you know the truth? <laughs> I believe there are Nigerians that are richer than the richest people in the world. Hey, they got their money through corruption. Let's state facts. I mean, <laughs> there, are, there are Nigerians that are richer than the richest people in the world. However, they got their money. Yes, however, they got their money. 
So if that man, if, if, if someone has stolen money now and decides to wash the money, if you understand what that means, and then, and then show up as a very rich man. Okay, so you see him on the surface. Wow, he buys cars every week. He flies, he doesn't fly the same private jets for, for after every month, he changes his private jets. Oh, he does this, he does that. And you go, wow, you want to be like him? Okay. There are, there are people that are known, well, perceived as ritualists over, over in this part of the world. You know what I mean by that? And they do lots of um, demonic things and bad things to, to get money. And some of them actually advance in it. You see them rich. You see them wealthy. You know, sometimes you see people who, you hear, you hear all these things and, and sometimes you meet people who actually confess certain things to you. So you see someone is rich, stinkingly rich. But you don't see that rich is reflecting anyone close to him. And then when you get deeper, you find out that it's one of the rules to keep the riches. I must not spend this money on my immediate family. I can spend it for outsiders, but I can't spend it for my immediate family. So now because the person is afraid to die, see, because you're told that, you, you understand what I'm talking about? Now, would you see that kind of person and envy him? He buys the cars, he has the houses. Would you see him and envy him? If you know the backstory. No, you wouldn't. But he's rich. So I ask you this question: who's the richest person in the world? Truly? Who? But before you start comparing yourself and, and make those kind of silly comparisons, you don't know. You don't know. David said it. He said, I almost fainted when I beheld and saw the prosperity of the wicked. I saw them rise and, and they are so boastful because you see them do all the wrong stuff and, and they are so boastful and say, look, God does not even know. And then you look at them and they prosper. He said, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. Kalabayadabash. But they don't know God. They don't know God. I love what David said. He said, when, when I looked at these things, it troubled my heart. Until I went into your sanctuary. He was talking to God. Then I understood their end. What did he see in the sanctuary of God? What do you find in the sanctuary of God? The word of the Lord. When he went into the sanctuary, he, he became calm and quiet. And the word of the Lord came to him. He said, David, why are you envying those people? The Lord is not fair. How come they drive the best cars? How come they do this? How come they do this? How come they do this? And the Lord says, David, look up. See their end. See where they are headed. Is that where you want to go? Ha! Lord, you know, you know, when people talk carelessly, it's just simple. They've not met the Lord. They haven't. <laughs> because, because sometimes you, you look at people and you want, man, you're so bold in error. And, and you know, you, you just know the problem is they've not met with the Lord. When you meet the Lord, there are certain things you become, you know what brokenness is. You will know. Just like David. He said, when I, until I entered into your sanctuary, he became broken. He saw it like, whoa. I don't think I want that. <laughs> that is David. He almost became envious of other people who were rich. It's not every riches that come from the Lord. Not everyone. And, and you can't let men sway you. 
by their riches. No. No. I'm not, I'm not even telling you about, oh, you don't know whether they don't sleep at night. No. Listen, God is not putting you in competition with anybody. Never. So don't even try to compete. Say, I'm, I'm going to, no, we're much younger. We used to say those things. Ah, I'm going to be the richest man in the world by faith. I'm going to, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be richer than this person. Come on, come on. You know, when you grow up, you just remember all your thoughts and say how silly I was. Not because it didn't happen, but what was I thinking? You know, why was I comparing my riches to that person? Why? Because in truth, you're richer than them. Far richer than them. Ah, pastor, well, please don't say all these things. Just psyching up yourself. No, you are. See, for them, Anywhere they go, <clears throat> do you know? Their money is limited to this place. Yeah. Their money is limited to this place. But we, in Abbasca Paradia, you know, I think the, the, the challenge is many of God's children have not been trained or have not been taught how to assess their riches. We are rich. We are rich. Listen, I know there are pastors who tell you for you to have money, you have to work hard. They are lying to you. I'll tell you the truth. They are lying to you. Yes, there you've come. Uh -uh. They are lying to you. You don't need to work hard to get money. No, you don't need to. Oh, okay. I think I know what he wants to say. Uh, work smart, not work hard. No, that's not what even I'm, not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm telling you is you were born rich. You were born loaded. Me? Yes, you. I said, well, I don't know where the village I was born in. You don't know my parents were living in one touch house. And then we, I was born there. And we, in fact, uh, we're too broke. That's, uh, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. The day you got born again, hear me? The day you got born again, you remember you were born that day. You born again. So you were born. The day you got born again, you were born into wealth. And someone gets frustrated and say, look, I'm tired of hearing this thing. Where is the wealth? You see, that's the thing. You've not sat down to learn how to assess the riches that you have. And those riches are not in spiritual things alone. Say, so, uh, the riches God gives to us is in grace and in mercy. And, and all this. The Bible says, who is rich in mercy? <laughs> David said, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. And he says, and it, he adds, take note, the blessing of the Lord, he eats. Take note, the blessing of the Lord, Eat. What is the eat? The blessing. So riches is not the blessing. Please understand. But the blessing makes you rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. They say it adds no sorrow to it. No. He. Who's the he now? The blesser. Now, when you look at that scripture, you will understand what he's saying. You think when God blesses, he doesn't add sorrow to it. So um, it's not like the rich also cries. No, the, when the Lord blesses you, he will take away tears from your eyes. No, that's not what that scripture will say. The, the, the ex best explanation of that scripture, I'm going to give it to you, is this. And I think some translation puts it that way. I can tell you this for truth, for, I mean, for, for what it is, because... 
You know, like I always tell you this. Some of us don't just read the Bible. We don't put Greek, Hebrew, amplified this and this. We don't just you know, start going to look for root words. Uh, even that. I've done all those things. So don't think I'm just trying to dissuade you. I've, I've studied the Bible. I've, I've, I, I've studied. But I got to the end of all that. <laughs> it's God, yes. And I found the truth. I realized even when you study in Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic, you can still go wrong, very wrong. Because it may still not tell you the, the Greek does not tell you the mind, because Greek was still a limited language. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? The Hebrew may not tell you the mind, because it's still limited. Every language on earth has its limitations. And you know that even in your own language, sometimes you're communicating and you feel the, your, the, the words available in a specific language does not convey what is in your heart. So someone who doesn't know your heart can misinterpret you anytime. See? So, even the dictionaries, Hebrew dictionary, Greek dictionary, Aramaic dictionary, even those things may not give you the real meaning of a scripture or of a, of a word. It may not. The only way you can know is when you can assess the heart of the speaker. Yes. So when, when David said the blessing of the Lord eats, makes rich. Mm -hmm. And he adds no sorrow with it. He's referring to, he adds no sorrow with it. Now, when God blesses you, that blessing he has given to you, it carries in it the uh, machinery to make you rich. If you know how to spin it. Now, spinning, it doesn't mean um, using, using spiritual things to... Um, to cheat people no no the blessing of the lord can take care of you and then in that says neither does he add sorrow he adds no sorrow with it what he means by he adds no sorrow with it is he does not require your toiling He makes you rich. He blesses you. The blessing has the ability to make you rich. Okay? Now when he says rich, yes, rich in material things. Yes. <laughs> yes. And he says, he, the blesser, having blessed you, does not require your toiling to increase that blessing or those riches. And he adds no sorrow. He doesn't bless you and not tell you, go and walk. People don't know God. So, so you see, we, it, 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 I'm sorry to tell you this. A lot of people, even preachers, live in this earth's realm. That's all they see. That's all they see. And because that's all they see, now notice, notice, most times when people talk about you, mu you must work hard. You must do this. You must do this. Watch their lives. They are the same people that have a problem with giving. Yeah. They have a problem with giving. Because you cannot believe in the blessing of the Lord and have a problem with giving. You can't. Because you know, now, the same way, one who's, who believes in working hard to get money is going to have a problem with giving because if I work hard to get all this money, how do I just give it all away? See? So where will I now start from again? And that was the problem Job had. Even though he was blessed of the Lord, God wanted to correct something in his mind. I know we're going to be talking about Job sometime next week. Let's analyze um, his life 
and how the things that happen to him happen. To one purpose, that we understand the mind of God, that we understand the personality of God. I told you that's what we'll be dealing on this month. We're going to be dealing on the knowledge of God. Praise God. My time is up. I pray for you. May God open your understanding fully. May the Spirit of the Lord breathe over you. So as Jesus breathed on the disciples and they understood the scriptures, I pray that the Lord will breathe on you today and open your eyes and your understanding to know the scriptures. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you also on Monday. Have a, have a fantastic weekend.